it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful festive holiday bells basket. This is a fun basket that we're going to learn how to create a base, work upward, and then change colors to create this fun fold. We're later going to crochet some bells onto the edge of our piece, and then when we fold it over, it creates this lovely basket. It almost looks like a stocking, the way the red is on the bottom and the fold is on the top. We're gonna to use some super bulky yarn and a large end hook, so this is a really quick project to stitch up. Now you can add pom-poms, bells, you could do the little silver jingle bells. I did some gold kind of, um, these, are, these are actually called in the craft store, the style is called Liberty Bells. Um, but you could do like the round jingle bells, pom-poms, tassels, what have you, buttons. And I have used a cream color yarn here that has gold thread through it, so it kind of mimics the gold bells that I have here. Now this makes a wonderful basket for a gift basket. You could put holiday cards in it, you could use it for storage or just to display in your home. So let's get started. Now our finished basket, when we unfold it, has a total height of about 12 inches from the base to the top. When we fold the basket over, it has a total height of about eight and a half inches, and then it has a circumference of about 26 inches. Now you can change the number of stitches and what have you to change the dimensions of this a little bit. If you'd like a different size, you could make it taller or shorter, but um, these were the dimensions that I got. If you follow the steps with me, you'll get something similar. And you could also experiment with different yarns and combinations and all the different, like I said, the bells as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and you'll want one that's large enough to accommodate this super bulky yarn that we have here. You'll need a tape measure, which will help get the height that we need. And we're also gonna be using a nine millimeter N crochet hook. This is my Furl Streamline Swirl. If you'd like to get one for yourself, I'll put the link down below as well as a coupon code to give you a discount. And as an option, you don't have to use these. I've gotten uh, some bells. I got a little pack of them at the craft store. And um, these are gold. They come in silver. I saw like an antique kind of brass and uh, like a antique, um, like a soft black color. And um, you can get them in any color you want. But I chose gold because my yarn here has some gold thread through it. They also have different styles. So this is the uh, Liberty Bell style. It has like a like a flared bottom, almost what you would see in like a craft, I mean a, a clock tower, like hanging from a clock tower. But um, you can also get like the circular jingle bell style as well. So it's totally up to you. You don't have to use them. Um, you could even do something like pom-poms or something like that around. We're gonna put that around the folded edge as it folds over, we're gonna put them around the edge of the, the bottom of that. Now let's talk about the yarn that we'll be using. We're gonna be using one ball of Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the cranberry colorway, and um, this is 106 yards per ball. And we're also gonna be using one ball of Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the Starlight, and this is 92 yards per ball. And I wanted to point that out because if you're looking for Wool Ease Thick and Quick, um, just know that the solids are a little bit bigger, they're 106 yards, and then the non-solids, basically, the prints, the self-striping, the metallic ones like I have here, um, are a little smaller, they're 92 yards. Now, if you need to substitute yarn, just look for a six super bulky on the yarn uh, weight scale, and one that recommends um, a nine millimeter crochet hook, basically. Um, now, we're gonna be using the, sa the, the recommended hook size, so, um, if you just look for that six super bulky and the recommended hook size, you'll be just fine. Okay, so we have our hook and our yarn and we're ready to go. Um, I got lucky, I found the end of my center pool ball, but if you can't find it, uh, you can find the strand on the outside. Okay, so we're gonna begin by working the base in the round and working outward, and then we're gonna um, get it as wide as we need it to be and then start working upward. The, the first color we're going to use is the cranberry and we're going to make the base and the sides about halfway up or so um, in the cranberry. And then we're going to switch colors later on to the sparkly white yarn and work a top so that we can kind of fold it over, okay? So let's work on the base 
first. What we need to do is put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Next, we're going to chain four, but let me zoom in first so you can see what I'm doing up close more. We're gonna chain four to make our ring that we'll be working our stitches into. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then what we're gonna do is join in the farthest chain from the hook to create our ring. So go down to that first chain you made, insert the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And you can kind of open up the ring a little bit to see where your stitches are gonna be. We're also gonna hold this tail along the edges we work so it will weave it in as we go along and save you a step later. Okay, let's start with round one. For round one, we're gonna chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna work 11 half double crochets into the center of the ring. To make a half double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops, and that's the half double crochet. So that was one, but we're gonna do a total of 11, okay? So one, and then let's do two, three, four, five, and we're still holding this tail along the edges we work. Also, if you need to scoot things around your ring a little bit to give yourself some more room to work the stitches, definitely feel free to do that. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So our chain two at the beginning of the round was also counted as a half double crochet. So when we go to join to close the ring, we're gonna count two chains up, insert the hook into that second chain up, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already in your hook. So we're closing up the round with a slip stitch, okay? So round one is complete and you should have this nice little circle here. Okay, so for round two, what we're gonna do this time is chain two, one, two, so in that first stitch, work two half double crochet stitches, one and two. Next stitch, two half double crochets, one and two. Next stitch, one and two. Next stitch, we're just gonna do this all the way around. Okay, so keep going around working two half double crochets in each stitch. Okay, just working my last two half double crochets, one and two. Join with a slip stitch to close in the second chain up, same thing we did before, one, two. Join with a slip stitch and round two is complete. Now if you want to close up this hole in the center, you can pull that tail in a little bit if you like. Okay. Round three, moving right along, what we're gonna do is chain two, one, two, and then what we're gonna do this time is work a half double crochet into the first stitch, and then we're gonna work two half double crochet into the next stitch, one and two, and then a half double crochet into the next stitch, and two half double crochet into the next stitch. One and two, okay? So we're gonna just repeat that all the way around. So we're gonna do one half double crochet, then two half double crochet, then one half double crochet, and then two, all the way around. So one half double crochet, then two half double crochet in the same stitch, okay? So just keep doing that all the way around and we'll rejoin at the end of round three. Just coming up to that very last stitch, and then what we're gonna do is in the second chain up once again, join with a slip stitch to close the round. So let's move on to round four. What we're gonna do is chain two, once again, work a half double crochet this time into the first stitch, work a half double crochet into the next stitch, 
and then work two half double crochet into the next stitch. So this round will be one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around, okay? Let's do a few of these together. So we're gonna continue around, work one half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, two half double crochet into the next stitch. Work one half double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, and then two half double crochet into the next stitch, okay? Keep doing that all the way around and we'll rejoin at the end of round four. Okay, coming up to the end of round four. And then we're gonna do the same thing and in the second chain up, join to close the round with a slip stitch. Okay. It's looking very nice. We have a nice base so far. We're gonna do one more round for our base and then start working upward. Okay, so what we wanna do for round five is to chain two. And then this time we're gonna do one, 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 two. One, 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 two, all the way around, okay? So work a half double crochet into that first stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and then in the stitch after that, work two half double crochets. So one half double crochet and two half double crochets, okay? So again, our sequence is one, 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 two, one, 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 two, all the way around, okay? Let's do that once more together. Work a half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and then two half double crochets into the next stitch. So one and two, okay? So continue this sequence all the way around for round five, and then what we're gonna do is start working upward. Okay, just coming up on that last stitch once again. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch in that second chain up once again to close the round. Okay, so we have our base now and it's looking really nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is start working up, but I like when I make baskets for them to sit nice and sturdy and have a nice, um, not exactly 90 degrees. I mean, it is yarn and it's soft and it's a basket, but I like it to have a straight side and not like a big, like loose curve to it. So what we're gonna do for that is do a back post um, half double crochet in each stitch around. And that's gonna add like this ridge onto the bottom of the basket. So when it sits on a surface, it'll have this nice edge to it, okay? So what we wanna do is chain two and then we're gonna work a back post double crochet in every stitch, or excuse me, a back post half double crochet in every stitch around, okay? So we're gonna find the first stitch and it's post. So the stitch is at the top, that little loop at the top, but then the post is this straight piece underneath of it, okay? So if, you've not, if you're not familiar with a back post double crochet, half double crochet, <laughs> I keep saying double crochet, but it's a half double crochet. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So what we're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and we're going to take our hook and go behind our work, come in next to that post, go over top of it and back down. Then we're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it back through the way you came and you'll have three loops on the hook and then just complete the stitch like you normally would. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. And as you can see, there's now a little ridge here, okay? We're gonna create that all the way around. We're gonna do a couple more of these together in case you're not familiar with this stitch. Wrap the yarn around the hook, go behind your work, come through and over that post and back down. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it back through the way you came. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? Wrap yarn around the hook, go to the next post. Come up from the back, go over, over it and back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through, wrap yarn around hook, all three loops, okay? So you can kind of see how it's gonna create a nice little edge, okay? 
I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit and show you a few more in a row here. Okay, we're going to go around that post to create that nice little ridge. It just gives it a nice finished look when you sit it down on the table. Okay, just going all the way around, working a back post double crochet in each stitch. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with my back post double crochets and we will rejoin in just a moment. Okay, just working that last back post double crochet of our round. And then where that starting chain was where we began, we're going to count once again, two chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, we have the very beginnings of our basket base. And as you can see, once you straighten it out, it has a nice little ridge and you can see this just sits so nicely and, and it's very stable on the surface. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go continue upward, but we're going to switch it up and we're going to start doing some just really simple half double crochet stitches. Okay, so for round seven, what we're going to do is chain two, one, two, and we're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around our basket, okay? So work one in the first stitch, work one in the next stitch, one in the next stitch, and we're just going to do this all the way around. Okay, so work a half double crochet in each stitch around. You can see already it's going to give us some height. Okay, coming up to the end of round seven, just working that last half double crochet, and we're going to join with a slip stitch in that second chain up like we've been doing. All right, so we're, our basket is making some progress. We're getting some nice height on our sides, and I like to just straighten things up as I go uh, complete each round. So what we're going to do next is we're going to repeat round seven a couple more times um, and get some height on our basket. Now I have a, some yarn left, so I'm going to keep going with mine. When we rejoin, I'll give you a height measurement that we have and um, give you a rounds update. But we're going to keep going and building some height up the side of our basket. Just working that last half double crochet of our round, and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to close the round just like we've been doing. And I have just a little bit of yarn. It's not enough to do another round. So we're ready to move on to the next part. Um, but before we do that, let me just, I'm gonna cut the yarn. I don't have much left, but I'm gonna cut it just to keep things more manageable. And we're gonna fasten off. And then I just wanted to show you the basket here um, from the bottom, from the table surface here upward, we have about seven inches. It's like right at seven inches there, okay? So work yours until you get about seven inches, unless you want it to be shorter, um, but it's up to you. But I'm gonna make mine seven inches. And now we're ready to do the top part. We're gonna add a white top to this and keep going, and then later we're gonna fold it down, okay? So what we need to do, the fold will be on the round where we, we're joining the white yarn. So we're gonna make this about half, this white part, we're gonna make it about half so that this can be folded down about halfway. You don't want it to be folded down too much because it's going to cover up too much of that red. Um, you want it to be about half and half, okay? So what we're gonna do is flip this back around and we'll take care of that tail later. But you're going to, where you fastened off just now, you're gonna reinsert your hook back into that same stitch, grab your new yarn, and just hook it onto your hook. Just like that, and then we're just gonna tie it right on. And then, I'm gonna also throw that tail in there, in, this, in the basket. Then what we're gonna do is, once again, reinsert your hook back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and chain two. And then, in that first stitch, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna continue, but we're working in a different color. So you're gonna work a half double crochet into that first stitch, and in every stitch, all the way around your round. And what we're gonna do is just keep repeating the rounds that we've been doing. 
that these half double crochet rounds. But what, you, what you're going to do is you're going to repeat these rounds until the this white section or whatever color you've chosen. But you're going to do it until this white section is about half the the height of the of the red part. Okay. So we did seven inches. So it would be about three and a half inches for this basket. If you've changed the height, just um, you know, account for that as well, okay? So I'm just gonna work a half double crochet in each round, all the way around. We're just keeping uh, repeating the round that we've been doing, but we're going to um, you know, obviously work it in the other color and keep going until, if your basket is seven inches high like mine, keep going until the, the white section is about three and a half inches or if you've changed the height, again, um, half the size of the height, okay? So keep going, and when we rejoin, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you our little fold, and we're also going to add our bells. If you wanted to add the bells or um, whatever you um, in adornments you wanted to put on yours, embellishments or what have you, um, we're going to add those next. So keep going with the white. Just keep working those same half double crochet rounds. Work at about half the height of your red part of your basket. And then when we rejoin, we're going to do our little flip and add some bells. Okay, we're just working that last half double crochet of the round. And once again, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to close the round. And our top part of our basket is complete. Now, before we add... The next round with the bells, I just wanted to show you how you can kind of test this out before you finish just to see if you have enough length on it. Go ahead and flip it down. Now we're going to weave these ends in later. But go ahead and flip it down and you can see it um, adds a beautiful band um, or like a topper onto our basket. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is flip this back up. We're going to add some bells. Now, this is totally optional, like I mentioned before, but if you want to add the bells, they're super duper easy to do. So what we want to do first is we're going to thread our bells onto our yarn. So you'll need to, now my bells have a large enough ring at the top where I could probably do this by hand without a needle, but if you'd like to do and uh, have a needle, you can use a needle as well. Just make sure that your needle can pass through the opening of your bell, okay? So I'm gonna put that aside. And then what we're gonna do is pull a few yards out, enough to do a round and then a little extra just in case, okay? So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, wing spans. That's more than enough yarn, okay? And I'm going to cut it, okay? So then what we want to do is we can thread our needle. This is more than enough yarn, so if you have a little less than this, that's okay. Whatever you think you'll need to make a round. I just wanted to give myself plenty, and I have plenty of yarn here to spare, okay? All right, so I'm going to thread my tapestry needle, and then I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve bells. I'm going to thread them all on. You don't have to use the same number I'm using. But we're just going to thread them all on to our tapestry needle here. And these are going to really just add a fun little extra. Um, as a side note, you don't have to um, do bells. You could do, there's like pom-pom ribbon, um, you could even do some lights or something like that. And so I have all my bells now and I'm just going to thread them. And again, I gave myself a lot of extra, but I'm going to get them almost to the front of my yarn here. Okay. And just take your time. You don't want to snag your yarn. And again, I gave myself more than enough yarn to work with here. I don't want to cut myself short. It would create more problems for us. You can hear my little bells are ringing. <laughs> okay, the next thing we want to do is you can grab some scrap yarn or um, stitch markers, whatever you like, and we're just going to kind of eyeball where we want these bells to be. We don't want them to be kind of haphazard. We want them 
to be evenly spaced. So here is the beginning of our round. We're gonna slide these bells out of the way and just sort of get this nice and flat. Now you can count the stitches if you like. I'm gonna eyeball mine. And then I'm gonna take my stitch markers and remember I have 12 bells. You wanna evenly space yours for the number of bells you have. So I'm gonna go one on one end to get it all the way across to the other end. And then while it's still folded, you can put one across from the other. Okay. And then you can do the halfway point here. And you can double check this when you're done. I'm just kind of eyeballing these now before I actually commit to adding these bells. I am going to count them just to double check myself. And then we can go here like this and do the halfway point here. And one across from that. Okay, so I have four more stitch markers to place. So let's open this up and just look at it and see if we have any large areas. Now, you want to make sure and readjust if necessary if something is not evenly spaced. So here I have three stitches in between this one, three stitches in between this one, but over here I have four stitches. So adjust as necessary so there's an even number of stitches between each one. And you might need to kind of two, three, four. You might need to kind of uh, play around with it a little bit. Each of these have three, each of these have three, so one, two, three. We'll place that one there. Okay, so go ahead and just place them evenly around your piece. Okay, so once your stitch markers are evenly spaced, they don't have to be perfectly, perfectly evenly spaced. Um, if you're off by a stitch or here and there, it's okay. Um, just as long as they, and the stitch markers will help you visually see how you want it to look before you commit to putting them on. Now, we are going to go around and work a single crochet stitch in each of these stitches. But when we get to a stitch marker, we're going to remove the stitch marker and place a bell. So place a bell at each place you've put a stitch marker. So what we're going to do is chain one, and then we're just going to start to work around our edge here. And I put one pretty early on. So I'm going to take this stitch marker out. Once you take your stitch marker off, what you're going to do is slide your bell up and you're going to put it uh, as far up against the stitch as you can. And then you're going to go into that stitch, again, making sure that bell is as far over as you can go with it. Let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see here. So see if that bell is all the way as far over as it can go. Then you're going to bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, and bring it through both loops. Now, I want to point something out. If you notice, the bell is on the inside. That's what we want because when we flip it down, it will be on the outside, okay? So work all the way around. We're going to do a bunch of these together. Work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'm just going to do regular single crochets here. And I apologize for the sound of the bells dragging across my table. Um, single crochet all the way across. And look, we're at another marker. So we're going to take that off. And then we're going to grab another bell. And we're going to slide it up, up against as far up as we can go with our, our stitch. And then go ahead and work that stitch, making sure that bell has been incorporated. And see how it's on the inside? That's, that's okay, that's what we want. Okay, now let me just zoom out a tiny bit because I'm gonna turn my work now. And we're gonna continue across, working single crochets. I'm gonna try to lay these bells on this pile of yarn so it's not too noisy. Um, but we're just going to work single crochets all the way around. Let's do a few more of these bells together. We're at another stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And we're going to find the next bell in our line up here. And I'm going to push it all the way against my stitch. Now work your stitch, having that bell incorporated into that yarn. Yarn around hook, 
bring it through both loops, okay? Our bells look really festive and they're really drawing this glitter, this sparkle, this gold out of our yarn. It looks really nice together. Okay, keep going all the way around. And if you have an odd number of stitches, you know, your, your spacing may not be exactly the same number, but that's okay. As long as it's not too much of a, a gap. All right, we're going to slide another bell up and work the stitch. All right, keep going around. I'm going to move things around here. Our basket is looking really festive. Whoops, I dropped my stitch. Let's try that again. We're just working regular single crochets until we get to a stitch marker. Then we're going to remove our stitch marker again. Take our bell, slide it up. Make sure it's on the flipped away from you. And work the stitch. Okay, so keep working around incorporating those bells. I'm going to keep going with my round and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, we're coming up to our last stitch marker. Whoops, and I have, let me just put that hook back there. And I have one more bell down here. Slide it up, put it up against the stitch, work the stitch. I have another stitch here to do. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round, the same thing we've been doing. And then we have, I would say a yard or two left. So we, we estimated well. And I'm just gonna cut this tail to just make a more manageable tail. And then we're gonna fasten off, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. Okay, now here is the fun part. We are going to flip our basket. And let me just zoom out so you can see this. Our All of our stitch markers are over here. Just kind of slide everything out of the way. And we're just going to see how they're all on the inside and that's what we want. Now we're going to turn our basket so that our cute little bells or whatever embellishments you chose to add are on the outside. And don't they look so cute? I just love it. I just love this little basket. And you could use this really, I'm making mine for, I'm gonna put some, when we get holiday cards, I'm gonna put some in the basket so they have a spot. But this would make a lovely gift basket and what have you. So the last thing we need to do is to weave in the ends. So I'm gonna flip this back just for a moment so we can make sure we're weaving our ends in on the right side. So go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and if you have two colors, like I did, you want to make sure that you keep the right color on the right side. So we don't want to send our tail through this red, this cream color tail, through the red area because obviously it would show and not look as nice. So just keep it in the same color area. And I like to go in two directions to kind of lock the tail into place. And this yarn is very um, kind of floofy, so it, it will hold nicely. It's not... Um, like silky or whatever. Um, and then we also need to, now this one's a little bit tricky because remember we're folding our basket down. It's right on the inside where if you're looking down in it, you're gonna see it. So what I would like to do for this tail in particular is we're actually gonna put it on the outside, but it's gonna be under our fold. So it's not gonna show. So I'm gonna take this and send it through to the other side. And I'm gonna do the same for this other tail. It's technically on the outside of the basket, but because we're folding it over, it's not uh, going to show. And then just do the same for these tails. But again, because it'll be hidden, it's technically, it, it kind of feels weird to weave something on the outside of a project like this, but because it's gonna be, whoops, that one, the ply kind of came through, because it's gonna be under that fold, you'll never see it, okay? So go ahead, oops. You need to do a fresh cut sometimes when weaving in ends. It helps a lot sometimes. Um, but go ahead and weave that other end in. Just like that. And uh, this one we're going to go in the red area for that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is give that one a snip. 
Give that tail a snip. And we did our test fold, but now we're ready to do our actual fold for our basket. And you wanna get your fold nice and neat. You don't want it to be right on those stitches because it will look almost, mine kind of almost looks like teeth when I do it that way. So I wanna sort of roll it down a little bit just to make that edge a little bit softer looking. It's very uh, stitchy. Okay, and I'm just shaping my basket up getting the sides nice and straight. And you can actually, um, sometimes when I do basket edges like this, I'll sort of lay it flat and sort of almost like iron it with my hands, okay? But you can see how cute those bells look. Everything just turned out really nice. And our basket is complete. So that is how you make the festive holiday bells basket. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.